This is Bloomberg Markets Balance of Power. I'm Sherry Yan. And I'm David Weston. President Trump has said repeatedly now that he wants to pull U.S. troops out of Syria, quote, very soon. But those around him, including his military and even his own spokesperson, say we should be keeping at least some of the estimated 2,000 soldiers there for some time to come. So which is it? And what difference could it make? We welcome now Edward Jerzeshin, who served in the United States Diplomatic Corps under eight U.S. presidents, going back to John Fitzgerald Kennedy, including as ambassador to Syria. Ambassador Jerzeshin is now director of Rice University's Baker Institute of for public policy, and he comes to us from Houston. Welcome, Mr. Ambassador. Great to have you with us. Good to be with you. So answer the question I just posed. If the two alternatives are let's pull all the troops out right now, as opposed to let's keep at least some of the 2,000 there, what turns on that? What difference does that make? Well, I think you have noticed that there's a real tug within the Trump administration as to what we should do. Uh, the president had made it very clear even during his campaign that he would want to withdraw uh, troops from uh, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and that he was totally against nation building and getting bogged down in these uh, countries. Uh, that tendency on his part has not gone away. At the same time, his national security group, especially the military and the Pentagon, uh, are arguing that the job is not done. Uh, even President Trump has said that 90% of ISIS has been defeated in Syria. But there is that 10%. Uh, reportedly, according to the press, about 3,000 ISIS uh, personnel that are still in Syria in the east of the Euphrates River going toward the Iraqi border. So the job is not completely done. Uh, that's one factor. But the other important consideration that they're debating within the administration, and at the end of the day it's the president who decides, is that should the United States uh, withdraw its approximately 2,000 uh, troops, a lot of special operations forces there, from Syria, uh, before really trying to stabilize uh, the situation in that part of Syria where our troops are, and to remain there as a political lever uh, to use in any ongoing negotiations that will involve the other key actors in Syria, namely Russia, Iran, and yeah, Turkey. Exactly. So that is the framework. Well, exactly, and that's what I want to ask you about, because you served as ambassador to Israel as well as to Syria. You've been really involved in Israeli talks over there. Explain to us what's going on with the balance of power in a very difficult part of the world, in the Middle East, because Russia has been in there. They've had a warm water port for some time, but they really are in a bigger way now. If we pull out entirely, what could that do to the balance of power? Well, it's, it's obviously a very complicated situation, but Russia's interests really are what you just said, to maintain their access uh, in Latakia to a naval port, and they have other uh, military facilities to maintain their military relationship and uh, arms uh, sales to Syria. Uh, they have influence in what will happen in Syria, and they staunchly uh, defend the regime of Bashar al-Assad. The Iranians who are major players also in Syria, have been very active in the fighting in Syria through the IRGC, the Al-Quds Brigade, and uh, uh, they have been instrumental in the survival of Bashar al-Assad's regime because the Iranians see this regime as an access point for their influence from Tehran through Baghdad and Iraq through Damascus to Lebanon and Hezbollah. It's not so much a, a land corridor as you see a lot in press reports, it's, but it's an excess of influence that the Iranians are very uh, tactically and even strategically uh, putting in place. So right. they have a real stake. And then you have Turkey, who is very uh, concerned about the Kurdish uh, element south of its border in Syria, and they have a major stake in the situation. And then there's us. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Israelis, the Israelis are watching all of this very carefully because, you know, Syria right. borders the Golan Heights. Sure. Treasury today sanctioned Russian companies for contributing to the instability of Syria. So how big of an impact will this have on these firms, but also to Russia itself with all of these sanctions on different oligarchs? Well, you've seen the momentum of increasing sanctions against uh, 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 
uh, Russia. Uh, these sanctions are more focused on uh, some of the oligarchs, I, I think there are about seven oligarchs, a number of uh, political uh, officials in the, uh, in the Russian government, and some companies. Uh, so they're, if you could call them, they're, they're, more, they're smarter sanctions. They're very focused and targeted on individual companies and government officials. Uh, these sanctions can hurt because, as you well know, Putin's regime is, is largely based on uh, the, uh, the, the, this elitist uh, structure of oligarchs who run a large part of the economy, uh, especially the commodities. So it's interesting that uh, they've targeted uh, some energy uh, uh, companies and officials. It's interesting. Uh, Oleg mm -hmm. Deris Parska, they, they, they're really getting close to some of the top people around Putin. But they're not actually directly targeting President Vladimir Putin, which was one of the questions that President Trump, uh, the, the Treasury was asked when the sanctions were announced. So how is likely is it that President Trump will be able to keep a friendly relationship with President Putin while also conducting business as usual when it comes to sanctions and other actions against Russia? But well, yeah, that's interesting because, uh, you know, we talked about Syria and what the milita our military wants to do sort of Hold, hold in Syria for a while until the job is finally done, whatever that means. And, and President Trump saying, no, we got to get out. In Russia, what you have is uh, Secretary of Treasury, uh, the administration increasing their sanctions and, and measures against Russia. At the same time, President Trump is saying, I am inviting Putin for a meeting uh, in Washington. Uh, because he attaches a great deal of importance to opening up a dialogue between him and Putin. Uh, so you have this duality of approach in this administration that you see not only in Russia and Syria, but elsewhere. Right. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time. That was former U.S. Ambassador to Syria, Edward Shurjegin.